safe and sound holiday season be safe out there be careful be watchful and be protective of your loved ones and yourself amen, amen. And we know that this new variant of virus is moving and shaping and shaking throughout this world yeah. and it's just not over yet we have to continue to be very, very careful. In fact, the hospitals are filling up as fast as we're talking. Even more careful. And they're full and they're saying they can't even keep you. If you go, they're pushing you right back out to survive. And so we need to be prayerful. If you have not been vaccinated, what you're waiting for. Amen. Amen. Go on and get your vaccination. And the quicker the nation get vaccinated, the quicker the variants will stop maturating and changing and so it's too many greek alphabets to deal with amen you said my greek class at bbi i know omicron is nowhere near omega so we still got a ways to go but we don't want to see no new greek variances so we want to do that for a few moments, a uh, few moments. I wanted to have all the ministers just get up and give five minutes or so, but I'll do that next week. So don't, don't miss next week. Um, just talk about Jesus, amen. Amen. Isaiah, the ninth chapter. For un, verse 6, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor.
counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace. 53rd chapter of Isaiah, who hath believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of the dry ground. He hath no form, no comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Yes. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow, acquainted with grief. And we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised and we stained him not. Surely he had borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every man to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, as a sheep before her shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. And then the gospel recorded by St. Luke as we hear about the birth of our precious Lord. In St. Luke, if you go with me to verse 25. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Ghost was upon him. And it was revealed unto him by the Holy Ghost that he should not see death before he had seen the Lord Christ. And he came by the spirit unto the temple. And when the parents brought the child Jesus to do for him after the custom of the law, then he took him up in his arms and blessed God and said, Lord, now let us thou not serve thy servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of all the people Israel. A gift called Jesus. A gift called, do you know you're carrying a gift? Do you know you have in your possession a gift? It's already been packaged and wrapped. It's already been designed. It's already been orchestrated by heaven. You're walking around with a gift. Walking around with a gift, not that mama or daddy or sister or brother gave you. Not that a friend or comrade or colleague gave you. Not a spouse nor a child. But a gift called Jesus. That you carry in your hand, your heart, and in your head. A gift called Jesus. The gift called Jesus is a gift uh, that is a present or thing given willingly uh, without any payment. Any expectations. God gives the gift. He doesn't expect to get nothing back. He expects uh, to get the right response back. Because of the gift. You cannot give him a gift that's worthy or worthwhile. Than a gift called Jesus. The gift called Jesus has uh, something within it. That makes a difference in all of our lives. A gift is often thoughtful and meaningful. It's a meaningful gift. It's a thoughtful gift. It's a gift that makes us say, I want to give back because of the gift that's been given to me. What I do with it becomes the gift that I give back to the gift giver. Like little Johnny, when he heard Dean Marshall teaching in Sunday school, she said, you've got to give God your whole life. You got to give him your past, your present, and your future. You got to give him your hopes, your dreams, your aspirations. You got to give him your hurts, your sorrows, and your victories. You got to put your life in God's hand. Little Johnny got so excited that he stood inside of a gift box. 
His mother thought he locked his mind, and she said, son, what's wrong with you? He said, I'm trying to give God my whole life. Because of what God has given to us, we ought to want to respond back to God and understand that the gift giver does not give us anything to injure us, but to bless us. Can I tell you that your life is not a burden? Can I tell you that your life is not a curse? Can I tell you that your life has not been, de been designed by the enemy, but it's been designed by a friend? A friend who was so reckless in his love that he gave his only son that his son might give us life and that life will give us the rights to the tree of life. And I don't know about you, I want to see that tree. That tree where the leaf is good for the healing of a nation. A gift called Jesus. When we think about gifts, gifts are precious and they're priceless. They have thoughts behind it. They have memoirs behind it. They have memories of it. Some folk you give a gift to and they'll treat that gift good all of their life because they're just appreciative of the fact that you thought about them. The fact that you had them on their mind and you were able to pick out something that suited their fancy, that picked and focused on their imagination and their personality and their character. Don't you know God knows us completely? He knows us intimately. He knows us personally and he knows us totally and whenever he blesses us you can thank God that today he designed your day and your day is not my day and my day is not your day and he doesn't have to check with you to bless me and check with me to see about you but he has a blessing. One size fits you and not one size fits all because he thinks about us when he blesses us. Gifts are special and significant. Uh, the gift giver often tells how they feel about you by what they bless you with. Can I get a witness here? You don't have to have nothing in a card, but a card ought to be thoughtful, amen? And sometimes we find cards that have funny things, and we find cards that say some sentimental things, some things that touches and warms the heart, and we say it's as if this card was waiting for me to stop by and get it, because these are the expressions and the words that I feel when I give this card away. Well, the prophet looked at the gift, Isaiah, that loquacious prophet, that eloquent prophet, that silver tongued prophet, he speaks about Jesus, who is the Christ. He gets so excited that he skips past uh, the dark, dreadsome, dirty stable, and he jumps all the way to the end time prophetic message of Jesus reigning in the millennial kingdom. He says, Unto us, a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. He said he has a fivefold name that reminds us of his authority and his precious possession and precious presence in our midst. Aren't you glad Jesus is in the midst? When Jesus is in the midst, you can't be in the mess. I wish I had a praying church today. When Jesus is in the midst, you got joy over your jeopardy. You got peace over your problem. You got triumph over your trouble. When Jesus is in the midst, the doctor might say no, but God says yes. When Jesus is in the midst, healing is in the midst, deliverance is in the midst, breakthrough is in the midst, salvation is in the midst. Whatever you need, because he's Wonderful counselor. The advice that comes from Jesus is like no other. The voice that comes from Christ is like no other. Wonderful counselor. Miraculous counselor. That he is the miracle worker. And I don't know who I'm talking to today who showed up need a miracle right now. I come to tell you that he will not only perform the miracle, but he will proclaim. 
I'm about to get happy up here. The miracle. Because he's a walking, talking miracle. The epitome of prophecy. Walking in the midst which it possesses the healing and deliverance for the soul. Mighty God. His might is his strength. Everlasting Father. The parental perspective and pivotal position of his parenting. Oh my God. A father like no father. A father for the fatherless. A friend for the friendless. I thank God for the church. I grew up, I didn't have dad all around all the time, didn't have a lot of men in my life. But one day I trooped into the church and the church bumped into my spirit. And I met men who knew the Lord. They became fathers for me. They became big brothers for me. They became uncles for me. And all of them was emulating Christ in their life. Can I get a witness here? God knows how to be a father for the fatherless. Can I get a witness here? And uh, he is our friend. So Isaiah begins to speak about Christ and he always gets excited and he jumps up to uh, chapter <laughs> chapter yes this powerful chapter uh, chapter 53 mm -hmm. and in chapter 53 he asks us some questions and answers them at the same time right. in chapter 53 uh, Isaiah wants to know who has the record <laughs> and not the rumor right. can I get a witness here yeah. see a lot of folks celebrate Christmas behind a rumor but we who have faith celebrated behind the record. I wish you had a witness here. Yeah. The rumor that he might be the son of God. The rumor that he might have been born of a virgin. The rumor that he might be God's in flesh. But, but he answers the question in Isaiah, as Sister Grameel read it for us earlier. Who has believed our report? The value of the report, the volume of the report, and the validity of the report. The value of the report in the gift that you have as I go to my seat is the fact that it's worth something that makes a difference in everybody's life. Whatever you do, don't give up on Jesus because Jesus won't give up on you. I'm preaching to somebody. Whatever you do, carry him with you. Tell somebody about a man from Galilee. And if you're in sin, he'll set you free. It's worth something. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's valuable. It's, it's, worth, it's, it's something. worth something. It's yeah. worth wow, It's worthy. But then the vault. Yeah. Not just cheap grace. Cheap grace that makes you slip up a hand only because of what God did for you today. Real grace make you look back over the annuals of your life and say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I just don't know. He's been my doctor in the sick room. He's been my lawyer in the courtroom. He's been my bridge over troubled water. He's been my way maker, my provider. He's been bread in a starving land, water in dry places. He's been a doctor when the doctor said no and all the physicians stood around and the nurses looked like they had worry on their mind. And when I was rolled in, I walked out of that hospital because he's that kind of God. The volume of the report. The volume. The volume of the report. 39 for history. 27 for instruction. 66 books in the B-I-B-L-E. Basic instruction before leaving earth. The volume of the report. Oh my God. And then it's verified and the validity of it is found through the Holy Ghost. It's real. Yes. Because you ain't, let me say it like this, you ain't who you used to be. Shouting stuff right there. You don't think like you used to think. You don't do what you used to do. You don't go. You don't have the aspirations or the appetites. You don't have the imagination. You don't have the thoughts because the victory is found 
in the validity through the Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit that comes into us gives us new life. I'm taking my seat. But Simeon said, as I bless this child, I ask that you bless me. And I come to tell you, you cannot bless Jesus without God blessing you. You cannot share Jesus without the gift giver making a difference in your life. You got to run and tell. Run and tell about Jesus. Bouncing baby boy. Born in Bethlehem. Born in a manger to take us to his mansion. For I heard him say, in my father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. And that's why I'm going to carry my gift and share my gift everywhere I go. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here that don't mind telling the world that Jesus came down through 42 generations? Isaiah couldn't go. Jeremiah couldn't go. Amos couldn't go. Ezekiel couldn't go. Abraham, Isaac, or Jacob couldn't go. Naomi or Ruth couldn't go. Rahab couldn't go. But he said, if you prepare me a baby's body, I'll go down and redeem mankind. He got on that human train. Virgin named Mary, 14 years old, carrying my blessing. Sharing my miracle, sharing my salvation, and for nine long months he was born in Bethlehem of Judea. Carry the gift that walked the dusty roads of Bethphage and Bethany and Jerusalem and Samaria. Tell the world he healed the sick and raised the dead. got a gift. And that gift is named Jesus. Oh my God. That gift, his name is Jesus. Sweeter than the honey in the honeycomb. Brighter than crystal. Clearer than water. Higher than the mountain. Deeper than the ocean. Jesus is that name a gift called Jesus somebody ought to shout his name Jesus 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 oh Jesus the door of my father's house is open we have a gift to give you today. Yeah. If you don't have Jesus Christ in your heart, in your life, if you've never been baptized, you ought to give him your life. Give it to him. He gave you his all. Yeah. He gave you his best. He gave you the totality of his love, the epitome of his grace. Would you come to him as he has come back to us? He knew that we couldn't go to him 
So he came down to us so that we could get to him. Jesus paid it all, all to him. I owe. Sin left the crimson stain. But what did he do? He washed it. Whiter than snow. Didn't he do it? In case you have fallen by the wayside of the night. Dreams and tears and shadows. You're all broken inside. You don't have to worry. Yeah. Mm -hmm.